Today, there are two million descendants of French Canadian immigrants living in New England. These are our stories. Welcome to the French Canadian Legacy Podcast. Venez tous jeunes filles et garçons, je vais vous raconter l'histoire de notre immigration ici au USA, de grands aventuriers de pays étrangers. Bonjour everyone, this is Melody with the French Canadian News Wrap-Up for 2022. This segment is where I mention notable highlights that happened throughout the last year. So let's get started. We'll start in January with the Jack Kerouac Centennial. The city of Lowell, Massachusetts remembered and celebrated Franco-American writer Jack Kerouac, author of On the Road, the novel that sparked the Beat Generation. In February, Franco Foods was featured on New Hampshire Chronicle, where Natalie Hirti and her son Oscar spoke about their YouTube show where they show you how to cook traditional foods of the worldwide Francophonie. In March, the collaborated book titled French All Around Us was published by TBR Books under editors Dr. Kathleen Stein-Smith and Fabrice Dramont. Here's a summary of the book. French is literally everywhere, in our history and values, in our families, and in our neighborhoods and communities. From the croissant or macaron in our local cafe or bistro, to family and place names across the country. These are the stories of French language and Francophone culture in the U.S., but even more importantly, the stories of Franco-Americans, ranging from descendants of the earliest French explorers and French-Canadian immigrants to the newest arrivals in the U.S. from throughout the Francophonie world. You can order the book online through TBR Books or Amazon. In April, I attended a Fisher Cats game with two of my fellow admins from the Le Rêve de Gagnon Facebook group and learned about cross-cultural connection through baseball. Within our online Franco-American groups, try to make new friends and go out to a sporting event or other activity. French Canadians and Québécois offer to teach your new American friends French, and we can help with your English if you would like. Let's help each other out and strive for more in-person connections. In May, the Organisation Internationale de la Francophonie in New York City held a book launch event for French All Around Us. This was an in-person and virtual event that was recorded by French Morning, so you can catch the recap anytime. I attended the event in person, where I got to meet up with familiar faces and new people all doing our part in telling our Franco-American and French heritage stories. After the success of the FCL Geo Tour, we launched the Jack Kerouac Adventure Lab to offer another scavenger hunt combining real-life adventure with your smartphone and, of course, your Kerouac knowledge. The Jack Kerouac Adventure Lab is sponsored by the government of Quebec. In June, Acadian musician Robert Sylvain performed the first live concert of Meme's Notebook, This music project started with old Acadian folk songs from Sylvain's Meme that he rearranged and recorded a double CD set for in 2020, thanks in part to a grant from the Maine Arts Council. Sylvain performed the songs in both the original French and the English translations with an all-star cast of traditional musicians. Writer and performer Abby Page premiered her play Les Filles du Quoi, Daughters of What, in the Lost Nation Theater in Montpelier, Vermont. Page's one-woman play tells a story of an American with French-Canadian roots immigrating to Canada a century after her great-grandparents immigrated to the United States, receiving development support from the Canada Council for the Arts and the New Brunswick Arts Board. This bilingual one-woman show looks for answers about the past and present, the living and the dead, and the history and stories of Franco-Americans and more. In July, the University of Maine and Orono renamed a campus building after alumni Karen L. Beaujolais the Brewer, Maine native, and now San Diego-based attorney. Beaudreau states, As a first-generation college student and a Franco-American woman, my path was not easy, particularly when I lived in Maine. I want those who follow me to understand that regardless of the hurdles put in front of you, success is very achievable if you set clear goals, work hard, and seek out great mentors. In August, Governor Janet Mills visited the Acadian Archives at the University of Maine in Fort Kent. Governor Mills and the Maine State Library made a special announcement of two new initiatives to digitize historical records pertaining to Franco-Americans and Acadians in Maine. Governor Mills stated, People of Franco-American, including Acadian ancestry, are at the heart of Maine. I am proud to join the Maine State Library in announcing these projects, which will preserve their history for future generations. Going forward, anyone will be able to easily access these historical records online, protecting the original documents and supporting public education at the same time. A new women's hockey team in Quebec was announced called Le Force de Montreal. This up-and-coming women's hockey team was announced in August, but made their debut this last winter. 
They're touring in smaller towns throughout Quebec, as well as competing at their home base in Montreal. Don't miss this new team of talented female players as they continue to represent Montreal. In September, a new course called Discovering the French Language in North America was introduced by Dr. Claire-Marie Brisson, a professor at Harvard University in Boston. For Brisson, a Franco-American from Michigan with family from Quebec, her course discusses the Francophonie and French heritage groups of North America. Brisson states, Quebec is an inspiration to other parts of French-speaking America. For example, my family is originally from Quebec. We are going to discuss how Francophones came out of Quebec and Louisiana as centers of the Francophonie. And we are going to come back to the questions of, what does that represent for Franco-Americans and Franco-Canadians, Quebec or Louisiana, as cultural centers of North America? In October, we had exciting news out of Canada that they dropped their COVID-19 restrictions which included the travel vaccine requirement to cross the border, making it accessible for everyone once again. Are you planning a trip up north? I know that I'm excited to someday take my own trip up to Quebec. Of course, we had the annual New Hampshire Poutine Fest in Merrimack, where Poutiniacs gather to taste test local creations of this classic Quebecois comfort food. This was the second year that NH Poutine Fest took place in October, originally an August event, where attendees have voiced that they prefer the cooler weather with their poutine, as well as the fun of wearing Halloween costumes to the event. Coinciding with NH Poutine Fest was the second annual Young Franco-American Summit started by the Franco-American Programs at the UMaine campus in Orono. This year, the event was hosted at the Milliard Museum in Manchester, New Hampshire. This event is centered around those aged 18 to 35 to share presentations about topic in the Franco-American community. I'll be hosting this year's event later this year in October, so I hope to see new faces at the 2023 Young Franco-American Summit. In November, FCL celebrated 100,000 listens to the podcast, so merci beaucoup for all of your support. Pate Chinois made the local New Hampshire news with an article titled The Truth About Quebec's Most Famous and Mysterious Pie, written by Amanda Belland. Bellin shares her own experience growing up with this French-Canadian dish and dives into historical theories as to how it got its name. Finally, in December, the North American Francophone podcast hosted by Dr. Claire-Marie Brisson returned after two years. This podcast discusses French topics in English, so recap the time missed and get caught up with two new episodes. Our friends at the New Foundation in New Orleans had exciting news of French President Emmanuel Macron visiting Louisiana to discuss issues such as French immersion in schooling, cultural affairs, and environmental issues with officials including New Orleans Mayor Latoya Cantrell and Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards. That's our French-Canadian news wrap-up for 2022. We at the French-Canadian Legacy Podcast hope that you have a fantastic new year. Everything I've covered today will be linked in the French Canadian Legacy Podcast episode description. Merci for listening. Now our fathers look at us and sigh with despair To think that everything they love we simply do not share But the spirit never dies, our culture will survive Each of us must choose how much to keep alive Each of us must choose how much to keep alive Special thanks to Josie Vashon for providing the music. You can find more about her at josievashon.com. This podcast was produced and edited by Mike Campbell. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at fclpodcast at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at fclpodcast for more information about the topics discussed. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to this episode.